Never Mind the Hype was at Roadburn Festival 2017 to sit down with guest curator for the festival and Baroness frontman John Dyer Basin. This is our video interview. When I when Walter asked me to, if, you know, if I was interested in curating the festival, I, I, of course I said yes. You know, this is something I've. Uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I can't say that I've, I've always wanted this, but it's, it's the thought had crossed my mind, you know, in the past that, you know, how exciting it would be to curate a festival like Roadburn or Roadburn specifically, you know, because I've been coming here so frequently over the past, uh, you know, seven or eight years. So I was, you know, in, entirely honored to have the opportunity to do it. Uh, but of course, this, the second thing, the second emotion that I felt was, uh, you know, a, a sense of the overbearing weight that this might put on my shoulders, which uh, turned out to be true. Uh, it was, you know, it was a it was a massive amount of work, but uh, all very, you know, very much worth it. I've been booking bands for you know nearly twenty years now, and it can be. Re I know it can be really difficult, and of course, when you've got so many people involved with different attitudes, coming from different backgrounds and different areas at different levels. Uh, you never know what to expect from people, like whether they're going to be uh, difficult to work with and, and um, you know, convinced to do something like road burn um, or, you know, whether they'll be easy. And I feel like I was incredibly fortunate with this because uh, part of the part of my philosophy was that I didn't want to book or ask bands uh, that I was too far removed from. So, uh, you know, maybe one or two degrees of separation. They had to be, uh, you know, my most talented friends or... Uh, you know, bands that were very influential on our sound uh, as we were developing. And I was surprised how easy it was uh, to talk to everybody and, and how, you know, how simple the confirmations were. The most difficult thing was, you know, choosing those bands and then having to explain to some of my other friends, uh, you know, who I really would have liked to come that, that you know, that wasn't possible because I didn't want to be repetitive. I wanted to have a really diverse lineup, uh, which you know, it can be difficult because you have to say, yeah, as for every time you say yes once, you have to say no 10 or 50 times. Along with the curation came the, you know, the opportunity for Baroness to have a headlining set at 013. And I didn't, I didn't, didn't want to do like our, our typical set. Uh, you know, I wanted this to be something that, you know, perhaps we'd only do, you know, once in a career or at the very least something, you know, this, the sort of idea that we do all, almost never. So I, I, we chose to do a, like almost a, like a history of the band uh, and the way we, you know, the way we structured the set was to play, you know, one or two songs off of each album in the order that they were written, in the order that they were released, which meant going back and learning some songs we haven't played in, you know, years and years and years. So it, that part was difficult for, you know, for me personally, that the, you know, the set itself takes on a level of intimacy and emotion that, uh, can be very powerful to me, can be very overwhelming to me. I think that sometimes transfers from the stage to the audience. Uh, but that's, I think that's the point of, you know, that's part of what we do. You know, that's part of what, what music is about, is, is uh, drawing a reaction out of people. And the type of music that we play and the type of themes that we work with musically, uh, you know, they can, they can pull the, you know, they can pull emotions out of people. And, I don't know how that happens, or I don't. I certainly don't know how to make that happen. But when it does, it's you know, it's really that really elevates the show for me. And I, th I think you know, not only with Baroness, but with a lot of the, a lot of the bands that that I've seen here, it's it's just been like incredibly powerful and really, really like stupendous performances and everybody giving like much more than than they need to just to get through a set. You know, I, I love seeing that. You know, the interesting thing about uh, having the two stages was that it would seem that the appeal would be to play in the larger room. And I think for, you know, I think for the bands that were, that we placed on that, on that stage, that was a really great opportunity for them. And they were really, you know, happy and excited to play that stage. But then there were some bands who probably could have played in that room who really wanted to play uh, on the Patronat stage, uh, you know, Disfear, for instance. And I think that that was a, uh, you know, a, an excellent decision on their part. And, uh, you know, it really, 
it really paid off for me last night. Wa- you know, watching uh, watching all the bands uh, on the Patronat stage play in in that more intimate setting where there was a, like a much more immediate connection with the audience. So you got a little like different kind of uh, energy. And you know, at, by the end of the night, by the Disphere set, it was you know just all out wild. I mean, Disphere Disphere got me to stage dive for the first time in ten years. So. Yeah, <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> it was insane. Uh, it came from a few discussions that Scott Kelly and I had um, several years ago, uh, where you know he and I really wanted to come out and visit Roadburn, but we didn't. Neither of us had records out, or we we just played here. And so we were trying to come up with a scheme that could get us here, uh, you know, where maybe we couldn't justify or afford coming over, you know, and and seeing the festival. And I, you know, I thought it was just like a. I think we both thought it was just a, a fun idea that was never going to happen. But then this year, when I when I got asked to curate, I pushed pretty hard to make that happen, and it was wild and chaotic. And we had one re- one single rehearsal the day before the the set, but. That's sort of what it was about, you know, this just like, uh, you know, capturing a spirit and bringing that up on the stage and, you know, letting the audience do some of the work for us. And, it, you know, it was, re- it was really great. And it was a lot of, again, a lot of work, but, but it was worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure we'll talk at some point about whether or not we can do something like that again. But I, I think that for, for that performance, uh, that is it. That's it. Like if, if we were to do something similar, we would change some element of it uh, so that this was the one time that that ever happened. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty avid music listener and I, I try to see as many shows as I can, uh, you know, in the, you know, when I'm at home. Uh, so here, you know, we've, we, I get this condensed, uh, itinerary to see like so many bands that, that that I love and when you know when I watch great bands perform and when I watch not so great bands perform I, I'm I'm there to learn you know I think that uh, you know as a, as a band and a musician who tours frequently who writes albums you you have to keep your ears open you have to keep your eyes open to draw in new influences because when you're young and you play music you're just you're just taking all these influences and putting them in your music as you get older it can be easy to get kind of stuck in you know a formula that works. I don't believe in that. I just want to see people who are outdoing us and then try to match and achieve similar things to what they are, you know. Yeah, I mean it came out better than I expected. Uh, I have a somewhat pessimistic view of things sometimes because uh very frequently in my experience things just completely explode and go off the rails uh so i would you know i would i i spent you know i think i spent enough time on the front end of this and you know speaking with the bands that uh you know every, everybody really came uh with you know a very high level of uh professionalism when it you know when it came to the performance and the setup and you know working within the the infrastructure of the festival uh which which just makes things for me and for the venue and for everybody who's volunteering and really, you know, most importantly for the audience, it made things easy for them because the changeovers were quick. You know, everybody respected the the time that the other bands needed. And I think for, you know, I think, as I said, the, the net result is that the audience has, uh, you know, a, in fact, a better experience because when the bands come on stage, they're just ready to go. You know, everybody's excited. There's very little drama, uh, if any at all. And uh, I, yeah, I just I, I you know sometimes i'm just happy that it hap you know that, that that the shows actually happen uh because they they sometimes they don't you know we all, we all know like sometimes there's extenuating circumstances so uh yeah i was i was pretty thrilled at the end of last night it just i feel so much i feel like 100 pounds lighter today or 30 kilograms or whatever you know <laughs> uh so I, yeah i feel great today and that concludes our time with John, but for more extensive Roadburn coverage, keep it right here on Nevermind the Hype.